Hello, this week we're going to be looking at freeze drying lawfulization, which uh, can sometimes be a bit of a puzzle. See you in a second. Hello, I've got some uh, herbs here, uh, freeze dried. Um, it's not what you think, it is actually um, coriander leaf, but it's the same freeze drying process that we subject pharmaceutical products to. Um, so let's go to the presentation and uh, pleased to be back with you um, for another uh, short uh, video looking at a subject for pharmaceuticals. Okay, so let's begin with what is lyophilization? Well, lyophilization or freeze drying is required for some liquid fill products which are not in themselves stable. So the act of what we're doing is preservation and this is possible because of a greatly reduced water content and the greatly reduced water content preserves the longevity of the product and it also stops any biological activity and also prevents microbial spoilage. And freeze drying works by freezing the material then reducing the surrounding pressure to allow the frozen water that, that's in our product to what's called sublimate directly from the solid phase, solid object, to the gas phase without going through um, becoming a liquid. And adding heat allows the frozen water in the material to go through this process. And then later on in the uh, medical facility, the powder can then be reconstituted using a solvent at the point of administration. So a lawfulization is a process step that um, is really important. Okay, and here's just an example, better than my herb one, of some freeze-dried um, coffee beans. And, um, you know, because freeze-drying is common in the food industry as well, to extend the shelf life of the product, maintain flavours and all sorts of things. But what's of concern to us is with pharmaceuticals, and here's a generic freeze-dried vial. So in pharmaceutical companies, quite a lot of pharmaceutical products are freeze dried and are said to extend the shelf life. And this is quite common with a number of biologics, particularly injectables. Um, so we're removing the water from the material, sealing the material into the glass vial, and then we can store ship and later reconstitute it in its original form. So it's highly useful um, for the selling and uh, marketing of the product. Okay, so freeze drying as I said has a number of advantages. So we've got the preservation of temperature sensitive products, those that we can't inactivate by higher forms of heat, so like blood plasma products. We can also achieve a chemical balance, which is again is important for biological reagents. We can provide a practical solution for certain products and to overcome certain delivery pr problems and it's also can help with maintaining concentration and gives us a good shelf life at the end of the product use. So what's going on with freeze drying? Well in basic terms of how it works um, then we have an initial freezing process that's carried out in such a way that the product reaches its desired crystalline structure and the product is then frozen by what's called its euteric temperature. And by this, this is the um, highest allowable product temperature during the desired conditions, which is the also the lowest possible melting temperature. So it gives the ideal state for the product. And also we have a partial vapor pressure surrounding the product, which needs to be lower than the pressure vapor of the product as it freezes at the same temperature. So that all sounds um, slightly technical, but it delivers the efficient freeze drying process. It's also important to note that there's a secondary drying phase, and this is aimed at eliminating the final traces of water, which remain due to any absorption effect. So here, the partial pressure of the vapor rising from the product 
will be at its lowest levels and at the completion of the process the treated product will have retained its form, volume and original structure as well as all the ideal physical, chemical and biological properties that we want and we can then store for the desired period of time until we add the solvent for reconstitution which is commonly water. There are some influencing factors that can affect how freeze drying works or doesn't work. So the most important critical quality attributes associated with freeze drying are the uh, state of the product, its protein conformation, its stability, the residual moisture content and the freeze dry product appearance, what's called the cake, and also to make sure that the reconstitution time is acceptable and this would be something that a biochemistry department would look at. So the process is strongly influenced by the rate of freezing, the speed and temperature, the drying process, the vacuum influence, the liquid um, shelf in which the product is placed, so the position in the freeze dryer, and essential control aspects during freeze drying. It's also important from the contamination control perspective that we load freeze dryers carefully, it's done row by row, and we need to recognise that people are a risk if a, where a freeze dryer is loaded manually, so that needs to have good microbial and particulate control, and the future state is automated loading using robotics technology. Um, so that brings this video um, to a close. We've looked at um, freeze drying, and there's an example there of a crystalline structure on the screen. So um, without further ado, good luck with the rest of your day. I hope this video has been of some interest and um, time for me to go back to the kitchen and see what I can whip up with this freeze dried product, which is coriander, I promise. See you later. Bye.